How's it going guys? Today we're going to be talking about these little geckos, morning geckos. Before we get into the video though, consider subscribing and turning post notifications on. And if you want, go follow me on Instagram. Morning geckos come from many places in the world. You can find them in certain islands of the South Pacific Ocean, Central America, South America, and Hawaii, all of which are very humid environments. Morning geckos are extremely small geckos, ranging from three to four inches in total length as adults. As babies, they'll range from half an inch to one inch, including the tail. Because these geckos are so tiny, they will not need a big enclosure at all. As babies, they can be kept in something as small as a one gallon jar. I personally went for a bigger option for my pair because I wanted to give them a little more room to explore and because it was my first time actually dealing with morning geckos. I went with a 2.5 gallon jar and it has worked great for them. If you want to learn how to build this enclosure, I have an entire video dedicated to building this enclosure. I always forget which corner it is. It's that. I think it's this one. The scary part about owning baby morning geckos is they can get out of basically any pre-made enclosure made by something like Exoterra. This is the reason why a lot of people such as Clint's Reptiles recommend you use something like a jar rather than an Exoterra for your babies. Even though they only range from 3 to 4 inches as adults, they will need an enclosure upgrade when that time comes. If you're only keeping one or two morning geckos, the minimum enclosure size, this is the bare minimum would be an eight by eight by 12. Now, if you're going to house three to five morning geckos in an enclosure, then you're going to want to upgrade to something like a 12 by 12 by 18. Like I said earlier, morning geckos come from very humid environments. This means that you're gonna to wanna to use a substrate that holds humidity very well. What I have in my 2.5 gallon jar here is Eco Earth, and it works really well. Um, sometimes I do have to switch it out though because it gets a little too damp in there and the water just kind of stays in there. So I do have to change that out uh, periodically. If you wanna use paper towel, that's all right, um, but I don't really use it. I just kind of like to go with a more naturalistic setup, but paper towel will be fine. Some of you guys might be thinking they'll get impaction if you use a loose substrate. Trust me, I used to be super paranoid about impaction as well. The thing is, as long as you're not feeding your geckos on the substrate, they should do fine and have no issues with impaction. In the wild, these geckos mainly hide in trees, on leaves, and under pieces of fallen bark. To replicate this in captivity, you can use things such as cork bark, fake plants, real plants. These guys are very good candidates for a bioactive enclosure and you can make a pretty beautiful enclosure with these geckos. These geckos love temperatures from 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, they thrive at room temperature. Make sure you don't go much higher than 80 degrees because if you go any higher than 83 degrees or at 83 degrees, um, that is life-threatening to your gecko. So humidity is a big deal for these geckos. The humidity in the enclosure should never go below 50%. Um, I recommend a range from 60% to 90%. Um, that seems to work great for these guys. Uh, give them dry out periods though. You don't want to keep it very humid in there all the time because then they can get respiratory infection. These geckos are very similar to crested geckos in terms of care because number one, they don't need any additional heat or UVB. And number two, they eat crested gecko diet. I love animals that eat crested gecko diet. It is one of the most simple things to feed your reptiles. It's super, super easy to prepare. What I do is I get a little lid from a one ounce deli cup, dump some powder on there, and then I spray it down with a misting bottle. Then it's complete and ready to put inside the enclosure. The two most popular diets would be Rapashi and Pangea, but there are other ones such as Clark's Crested Gecko Diet. Again, since they're super small, um, they won't actually eat that much Crested Gecko Diet. I've had my pair for about two months now, and I'm only this far into my Crested Gecko Diet. 
Right now, I'm only using Rapashi. I think I'm going to switch over to Pangea. Um, I'll see how they like it. I'll see which one they prefer, and then I'll go with that one. A couple other things morning geckos can eat are flightless fruit fries. A couple other things morning geckos can eat are flightless fruit flies and pinhead crickets. I have fed my morning geckos both of these, and they seem to really enjoy it. These are great options for individuals that refuse to eat crusted gecko diet and for baby morning geckos. Handling morning geckos in a room where there are many places to hide is not a great idea. These geckos are small, fast, and they blend in with a lot of things. Like most geckos, they can drop their tails. With frequent handling, they can become somewhat tame, but they'll still be pretty jumpy. Morning geckos are becoming more and more available online, at reptile expos, and in some reptile shops. The price really depends on what morph you're buying. There are a couple different morphs, such as yellow bellies, um, Hawaiian, and if you want to get one of those, uh, the price should be around $50 per gecko. If you want just a normal morning gecko morph, this is what I have, then they should cost around $25 per gecko. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, make sure to give it a like. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. I hope you got some good information out of this care guide, and I will see you guys in the next video.